Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing so well and welcome to this little video all about my favourite art supplies for oil painting that I'm using right now. I did make a video about this a while ago but in fact this is like an updated version. So I hope you will enjoy it and thank you so much for your wonderful comments on my last video. I truly appreciate it, I got such nice comments, I am so grateful. And also, uh, I have updated my Etsy shop. I think I added like one extra item, <laughs> but if you would like to check out my oil paintings, if you like my art, then I will leave a link below in my shop. So let's begin. So first of all, I thought I'd talk about paintbrushes, so which is why I'm holding a palette. Huh? Um, so I have changed my paintbrushes a little bit in the sense that I was using the Jackson's Okoya brushes, which I absolutely adore and I still use them and I still adore them. But I had to um, buy smart supplies from another art shop online uh, just recently and I desperately needed new brushes, a couple of them. And so I settled upon, because obviously they don't stock the Jackson's brand because Jackson's brand is from Jackson's, uh, so I settled on the ProArt Bristoline brushes. Now these are the ones with the grey handle, so ProArt do so many different types of brushes and it's quite confusing as to what which one you should get. And I used their white handled series previously and I sort of mentioned it on my channel as well that I was testing them out but I didn't actually like them in the end. Initially they seemed great but actually they uh, the bristles were very kind of weak and I felt that they sort of uh, flattened very quickly. Whereas these I've been using for a while now and I really really like them, they're much better. They're obviously more expensive. I feel like with brushes sometimes that does happen, you pay for the quality. But still, they're not mega expensive. They're, I think this was about maybe, this is a, this is a filbert? No, this is a flat. I prefer filberts or flats, those are my preferred choices. I don't generally use round brushes. Um, and so these give me the shape that I like. And uh, I believe it was around four pounds, but maybe I got it in the sales, so it was maybe like three, 50 or something like that, so not too bad. Okay, so that's the brushes, but I'm still using the Jackson's Okoya brushes when I order from Jackson's, so I sort of order the odd brush from time to time, so I would definitely still highly rate those. I would say they're about on par with these ones, so both amazing. So that's that, I'm just gonna throw that, yeah, amazing. Um, okay, so next up, this is a bit of a funny one, it's a bit of a, a funny uh, but relatable story about these palettes which is, which are, I'm not sure if I can get them on camera because they're actually quite big and that's upside down. Uh, so these are um, these new palettes that I found from this hilarious shop called The Works. I know <laughs> it's a bit of a comedy store in the sense that you go in there and it's a bit like a jumble sale, like everything, they literally just stock random things, the most random you could possibly imagine. Uh, so you'll have like romance novels from the 90s, then you'll have a bunch of cookery books that are kind of really obscure, <laughs> and then you'll have um, some gift wrapping items, and then they usually have, at least in the ones I've been to, uh, a small art section. So I happened to be passing and I thought I've got to have a look just to see because they do sometimes have some interesting things. Now the canvases that they stock, I've tried them before and I think they are pretty terrible. <laughs> but you can still find some interesting products and again the brushes I don't really like. I get that I say they're good for basically hobbyists so if you are somebody who just wants to muck around with paint there's no problem, you save a lot of money there, they're not expensive. But I happened to come across these palettes and I was really surprised because disposable palettes are not really the type of thing you find in sort of random shops. Uh, but yeah, I was really um, pretty, you know, happy with uh, the look of them and they're pretty much the same size as the Winsor & Newton ones, which is the other ones I usually use. They're a bit, a little bit smaller, so I say the Winsor & Newton ones go up to about there. Um, but I've used one this morning and actually I was really, uh, I thought they were pretty good. Uh, much thinner, sorry, no, a little thinner than the Winsor & Newton. 
but still perfectly functional. And if you come across this store and you fancy popping in for disposable pop palettes, pretty decent. The one point I'd like to make though is that they only contain 30 sheets. So you are actually getting less amount of sheets than the Winter and Newton. Don't ask me how much the Winter and Newton are because I don't know exactly, but the Winter and Newton is more. So that is the lit one little drawback, but otherwise amazing and much cheaper as well, probably like a pound or something, which was just, that's so affordable, maybe two pounds. But even then it's cheaper than the Winter and Newton ones. Okay, so next I'm gonna talk about oil paints and this is gonna be a long, long discussion because I'm going to talk about the oil paints that I have decided to keep in my rotation that I like to use for various different reasons and I'm also going to talk about the oil paints that I don't like to use a bit of a controversial thing but I wanted to it's actually not going to be controversial because I'm going to talk about the reasons why I don't like the oil paint but also that they're not bad oil paints and why they could actually be suitable for you even though they're not suitable for me because all the oil paint brands I'm going to talk about I think are absolutely amazing. I don't have any sort of dislike for the brands as such. It's just the brands that I choose. Okay, so first of all I'm going to talk about the oil paints that I use the most. So if I'm using, uh, if I'm painting fine detail, I really, really enjoy using Gamblin. I've mentioned I use Gamblin a lot on my channel and actually I have done a lot of speed paints using Gamblin oil paints. I really like Gamblin as a brand and actually their mediums are some of my all-time favourites. I think that they do mediums so well and their varnish as well, their Gamva uh, painting varnish. I always use that one, it's one of my favourites. I think it is my favourite, though my experience on varnishes is not vast, I'd just like to point that out, but it's always worked for me and um, I think although this is a specific technique to using it, uh, I, w I feel like I get really good results from it. So uh, with the Gamden oil paints, uh, what I do like about them is they are mostly non-toxic. Just be aware that although people say it's a non-toxic brand, they do have cadmiums and they also have cadmiums in some, some of their other colours. So for example in Naples yellow there is cadmium in that. So just be aware that certain pigments that they use won't necessarily be non-toxic, you really just need to sort of check it out. But of course they are famous for their lack of scent and this is a huge plus for me particularly because my space where I paint is not large. I also suffer for, from bleh, I also bleh, I also suffer from hay fever and some sort of slight allergies. So for me anything that doesn't have a smell that is, you know, present without you know a lingering scent afterwards is always a huge advantage. Uh, again what I like about uh, the Gamblin oil colours is their phthalos and I really like this colour, their magenta, but particularly their phthalos. I'm not a big fan of their earth colours. In fact I would recommend if you are looking for like the greatest palette ever to skip out their earth colours because I personally don't find them to be that strong in pigmentation and their burnt sienna is a bit bleh. <laughs> it's not my thing, I don't really like it. They're a bit of a drier paint, so slightly thicker and drier. I don't use them for spreading paint all across my canvas, I find them too dry, but for fine detail I find them absolutely excellent and if you are somebody who works in a realistic style, You've got to check them out. Gamblin is great. Also another point, just a small caveat. Um, I adore their transparent colours. I think that's what they do the absolute best. But also their radiant line is brilliant because it's such an enormous range of colours. Sort of really pastel shades. Uh, but actually what I was going to say was, there was one more thing and that is that, what was I going to say? Oh, I quite like the packaging. That's not what I was going to say. <laughs> Um, yes, in the US these are cheaper, whereas in the UK and I feel like other countries uh, they're more expensive because this, these are made I think in Oregon and um, I'm trying to see on the back if they say I think they're made in Oregon and actually what's interesting about oil paints is usually the country where they're manufactured are that they're cheaper there 
and so once they start sort of sending them abroad now it's not the case with all oil paints but quite often so there you go if you're looking to save money you might want to check out an oil paint brand that is um, you know local to your country so okay so that's gambling great so uh, let's throw that over there so okay so next up we have uh, so that's for my fine detail work now uh, next up we have Old Holland again I've mentioned this I've also done lots of reviews with Old Holland about Old Holland uh, one of my absolute favorite oil paints for strong striking pigmentation if I feel like my oil paint there's certain areas that lack pigmentation or that I really just want to like make them burst with color then Old Holland is what I use once again this is a thick paint a thicker paint so for me personally I'm not uh, I don't love sort of spreading it all across my canvas to um, you know create you know to cover a large area unless I'm painting at a prima um, in plain air, on plain air. If I'm painting plain air paintings, it's one of my favorite paints to use because the amount of pigmentation and coverage that you get with it is just insane. I would say it's the most pigmented oil paint I own and I just love it for that reason. But I don't use it all across my canvas. Again, I just like to just, you know, some, some certain areas I like to really glaze with it because even when you glaze with it, the pigmentation is so strong. And I just, if ever I want something to be emphasized, but I still do use it a lot. And actually one of my favorite colors of theirs is their green gold, which I think is a difficult color to get right. Lots of brands do it. I do also like the gambling green gold as well, but um, yeah, a, a difficult color. And I think that this is probably one of the best oil paints ever to exist. Okay, so that's Old Holland. Expensive, it's very, very expensive. Uh, but I actually, um, most of the colors that I use from them are not sort of, because I don't use cadmiums, so I'm not sort of like breaking, absolutely breaking the bank. But um, I think they're worth the money. Uh, but again, I don't know whether you necessarily need all their colors, I only have a few. Um, just the ones that I really think work well on certain areas in my paintings, the colors I love. So next up we have um, Michael Harding. Once again, um, an incredibly, um, you know, great, reputable brand. <laughs> Michael Harding is a British brand, so I think we can probably get it cheaper in the UK than anywhere else because I think it might be more expensive overseas um, and what's great about Michael Harding is he very often does sales so I think that's really really nice because sometimes you get premium brands and then they never go on sale and you end up just dreaming about trying you know different oil paints and you ne or any you know paints and you never get the opportunity because they're just always so highly priced so always look out for a sale if you're on a budget in any of these brands but I find particularly with Michael Harding he does quite often his paints often go on sale um, just a really amazing amazing oil paint uh, people rave about it and I do think it is justified one of the things I absolutely um, think is just so epic about his colors is that they spread so easily on the canvas so much more easily than Gambin and much more easily than Old Holland in my personal experience uh, but they're so so pigmented I mean you can just go like really spread your paint across the canvas and you'll get this like beautiful luminous color um, and I actually went to a competition a few years ago now where um, there are lots and lots of artists participating and when I was chatting to the artists after um, you know during competition and after uh, we all kind of discussed what you know oil paints we like to use and I would say 95 percent of the oil painters I spoke to used Michael Harding and they were all professional artists and their paintings were incredible so you can see that um, you know his uh, brand is going really fast and I think it's great because it is an amazing oil paint I don't actually have the color in my hand that is my favorite of his and I think it's called Amethyst um, 
sometimes when I have oil paints I just like paint with them and I don't look at the names but I think it is called amethyst and that's just such a beautiful purplish color so unique and um, I just really like his paints some of the paints much like old Holland some of the pigments are extremely expensive but if you're like me I mean I personally choose oil paints over two factors the colors that I need and that I love but mostly that I need to use and secondly um, in terms of toxicity so I tend to avoid any toxic pigments and things like that I know some purists will have a go at me like oh you know it's cadmium's not really even that bad and you know you just have to make sure to wash your hands that's true but I'm quite a clumsy person so so I have to just nuke any I any possibility of me like you know eating my paint or anything I mean I don't I, I've never done it so far but I just I just I'm also quite worried that in case I just like don't wash my hands quite thoroughly enough and like what if I eat afterwards and you know I this type of thing panics me so I just steer clear of anything like that so any um, oil paints that kind of have like heavy metal or lead in I don't touch but he does Michael Harding's brand does carry like lead white and um, like genuine um, ultramarine blue and all different types of oil paints that are historical based and they you know, really have a history behind them so I just think that's incredible so Michael Harding and Old Holland if you're interested in the history as well worth checking out but also the easiest paint to use I think one of the easiest because of the way it flows but if you're somebody who likes a drier paint then you'd want to stick to the Gamblin and the Old Holland and the thicker paint Gamblin and Old Holland but if you like an oilier paint which I personally do then Michael Harding is your deal so if I need to cover large areas uh, I will use this if I want a beautiful blend beautiful glazes and I want to work really fast again Michael Harding okay so next <laughs> So next, I do normally treat my paints very well, I'm just like, it's just so difficult to put it down there because I'm on camera. Uh, okay, so next up we have uh, something that I've discovered in um, slightly more recently, although I still have used these for months, is uh, Charvin, uh, the um, House Mais Francais, uh, the, the extra fine oil. This is a French brand and very difficult to find here in the UK, but so many amazing artists from the US rave about this French brand, which is so interesting because we are closer to France than the US, but we don't really get much um, of their products. Um, this is really, really an interesting and great uh, paint. Basically, two things to note. Uh, the Charvin does two lines. They do the extra fine oil paints and then they do the fine oil paints. This is the extra fine, so this is would be I suppose considered more their premium line. And then they the artist's line is the fine oils. Now I'm not somebody who sticks to just premium brands or just artist brands. I like to mix and match, I like to explore. I do think you should be like that because some artist brands are absolutely incredible and I think sometimes there's people think oh if you're painting professionally and selling your work you should only be using premium brands which is just you know not true at all a lot of people love Winsor & Newton for example and they you know a lot of professional artists use that so um, yeah just generally I think artists artists brands and premium brands they kind of merge together really so the uh, ex so the fine oils by Charvin uh, they actually um, have uh, their binder is um, poppy seed oil and linseed oil, linseed oil sort of blended together. It's like a mix, which is very interesting. And then the extra fine oils, it's, the binder is just poppy seed oil. So those three, three um, oil paints that I spoke about, Old Holland, Michael Hardy, Gamblin, they all have a binder of linseed oil, and that's pretty standard. Most oil paints have that binder but uh, Charvin have decided to branch out into or they probably have done years ago uh, into the whole poppy seed oil arena which is very interesting because um, obviously there's a brand that's super famous called Blocks. now I don't know where my tube of Blox is I actually had this all prepared and I put it down here and it's disappeared and I know why I was using it just a minute ago uh, but you just have to imagine it because that's the other brand I wanted to talk about so here's Blocks. <laughs> so the brand Blocks um, is used by Dali and uh, I use their white um, pretty much all the time 
and I have another couple of their colours and they're also ground with poppy seed oil so this particular oil is very slow drying I'm talking about you're looking at about five days drying time and so for that reason I don't use these paints all the time I only use them when it basically takes my fancy because I feel like I really want to just have a long painting session or just like really drag out um, you know painting like there's a painting that I'm just doing for fun maybe um, or like I'm planning to sell it but just at a later date so I then will use this paint because I just find it so fun to use definitely I would say it lands in the middle between you've got thick paint here which I would say would be old Holland and then you've got the more sort of oily paints over here which would be Michael Harding and then you've got Charvin which would sit right in the middle and I would say blocks as well though I do think blocks has a little bit more of a gel like texture very unique I think um, but both beautiful paints just beautiful and really um, rich colors and what I really like about this French brand is firstly the packaging is absolutely beautiful I don't know if you can see it here I'm just going to show it here cover my face it's a uh, yeah absolutely beautiful but also um, their color selection is so decadent it's like looking at a beautiful box of sweets like you open it up and it's like all these pastel colors and these jewel colors just a really aesthetically pleasing very instagrammable type of oil paint and they seem to be gaining a lot of popularity which i think is amazing because i do think they are a high quality product they're super expensive and i don't have even you know i don't have that many colors i'm trying to think how many i have about seven I would say um, and I just I love them um, just for kind of like the final layer of painting sometimes or when I'm just having a really relaxing painting session so whilst I don't use them all the time I really enjoy them they have no scent and they really blend beautifully and what else can I say about them yes if you're interested in checking these out then Green and Stone in London uh, the shop in Chelsea does stock them and um, you can go into their store and they have quite a big selection actually and you can also ring them up which I've done so in the past and order them so yeah so they're not part of my main um, like painting routine uh, but on the odd occasion when I feel like it they're amazing okay so finally I'm going to talk about the oil paints that I don't use that I've tried and for various reasons I they have fallen to the um, you know unused container <laughs> I was gonna say bin but that sounds completely silly because I don't put oil paints in the bin I still hang on to them and I think maybe I didn't like them then but in a couple of months I go back to them and just try them out again so um, I'm going to say first which I don't have on me because they're in another room and I didn't lay them out here which was just obviously dense of me Windsor & Newton the reason I don't use Windsor & Newton oil paints is because I, firstly, let me say the advantages, they're amazingly richly pigmented, I think they're incredibly good value. Um, they're the paints that I started using early on when I started painting, I've used them on and off for years in the past. And obviously when I was a kid and I started painting, I used Windsor & Newton. It's pretty much what everyone uses when they start because they're so sort of they go do great uh, deals with schools and they sort of promote their paints through schools but the reason I don't use them and actually just one more thing uh, the paintings the paintings that I've created using Windsor & Newton oil paints still look incredibly vibrant and beautiful and they haven't lost their vibrancy the paint hasn't lost its vibrancy so that is great however the reason I don't like them is one reason the smell. I cannot stand the smell of those paints. I hope in an ideal world in the future, Winston Newton make, can make paints that don't smell because all the paints that I just spoke about that I use on a regular basis, um, whilst they're not necessarily known for, they're not known apart from gambling for being non-toxic or anything like that, they don't have a smell. I would say the only one that has, um, the only two that have the very slight scent of linseed oil are, um, the um, are Michael Harding and Old Holland but this very slight smell of linseed oil is actually perfectly pleasant to me and I literally take offence by most scents and I don't find them offensive at all even in my small working space 
I do open the window, but generally speaking, they they don't the smell doesn't linger or anything. Windsor and Newton paints, their smell to me is like the worst thing on earth. I remember going into an art class maybe about a couple of years ago now. Um and I walked in and the smell of the Windsor and Newton paints hit me so hard it brought back all the memories I had of slaving away of my paintings and just being like engulfed in this smell. <laughs> so many people I know who, spoke to, who I've spoken to detest the Windsor and Newton oil paint smell. I don't know what they put in there to make this smell like that. It just could be just some linseed oil that it just stinks. I don't know, but please, Windsor and Newton, your paints stink but I don't hate them otherwise. I think they're great. <laughs> I don't think anyone from Windsor and Newton is gonna like what I just said, but I'm just trying to be honest. If you have an aversion to scents, steer clear and try a different oil paint brand. Uh, okay, so that's Windsor, no, that was Windsor and Newton, yes. Okay, so next is uh, Schmincke. This is Schmincke Mussini, absolutely loved by so many artists and for good reason because these ba are basically the glazing lover's dream. If you are somebody who likes to glaze, you like to build up oil paints in thin layers, Schmincke Messini is a brilliant brand. The colours come out luminous, they're glowing, they're so easy to use. The paints themselves are creamy. I'd say they sit right in the middle of, say, Old Hong being the, the thickest um, and Michael Harding being the oiliest. They sit right in the middle of that, so they have a nice creaminess. I would say their texture is actually quite similar to the Charvin oil paints that I mentioned. So lovely feeling, you know, buttery and smooth. However, my one complaint is we're just talking about smells, this, this leads me on to it. This they add, um, this is this is quite, I suppose, a little bit controversial. They put inside their oil paints uh Damar resin, I believe, and some purists don't like that because they don't like anything added into their oil paints apart from just, you know, sort of linseed oil or whatever binder it is. So um, that's sort of the controversial side of things. And um, I, I personally don't mind that. I, I personally don't mind things added to the paint as long as it, you know, improves the paint and the pigment stays vibrant. I'm not, you know, bothered about that. But for me, the smell of the Damar resin I detest it to me it smells like really strong furniture polish mixed with washing up liquid <laughs> and whilst I don't mind the smell of washing up liquid it's like an overpowering smell of that mixed with furniture polish what was the furniture polish I used to use um I don't know it had a face on it but I was actually once hit in hit on the head with a <laughs> with a bottle of furniture polish I don't I think that was probably it's like, like um, part of the reason why I dislike the smell. <laughs> I was once, uh, I was like a tiny kid and a bottle of furniture polish actually fell on my head when I was, <laughs> when I was like, um, like underneath the cupboard. I must have like pushed it or something. Well, anyway, <laughs> it maybe explains a lot, I don't know. But, sticking to more serious subjects, if you don't like strong smells, steer clear but having said that there are so many people so many artists i've heard of that love the smell of this so if um i would just i would just say buy one or two tubes and test it out which is what i did and thankfully i did it but it's such a shame because i love i just adore the paint it's lovely the paint is amazing it's just the smell i'm just gonna see if i can do this without actually um turning the camera off. Okay, here we go. Woo! I'm back. Okay, so here are some final uh, oil paints that I don't use. Uh, that I don't use. Okay, here we go. This is um, M. Graham's Walnut. No, it's not their Walnut Alkid. I That's their medium. <laughs> I don't use that either very much, although I do like it, but um, I haven't used it for a while. Um, this is the Artist's Oil Colour by M. Graham. So, um, an interesting, uh, or an interesting brand. They, as I said before, most of the time in oil paints, the binder is linseed oil, um, and in this case, you are looking at walnut oil as the binder. 
So why would you use, oh I didn't mention why you should, why they, people use poppy seed oil. Poppy seed oil doesn't yellow as much as linseed oil, so that's why probably Charvin and um, Blocks use it. It keeps the colours very bright and very luminous. The only drawback of course is the long drying time. So I would say these have a kind of moderate drying time. Walnut oil is quite an interesting oil. Um, it has a sort of, uh, gives the paint a little bit of a, I wouldn't say necessarily stringy quality, but it, it it's it's very difficult to describe. But I find the paint to be slightly stringy. Yes, <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm probably the only person on earth because I, there are so many fans of this oil paint. But to me, I I find it lands again between the very oily, um, or sorry, the more oily oil paints such as the Michael Hardy and the Old Holland over here. And I would say this falls in the middle. The the Embrane falls in the middle, but it has a texture that is a little bit more difficult to spread. I find perhaps it's a slightly tacky almost. Um, it's very difficult to describe and so I would say if you're looking into a non, another non-toxic brand then I would check out uh, this M. Graham but I would just buy like one or two tubes just to see if it's for you. But otherwise apart from the actual texture itself which I find to be a little bit difficult to get used to um, because it doesn't quite spread as easily as I like um, it's actually a very good paint like I've used not this colour but there's another colour I think I have um, the Thalo maybe I think I have a Thalo from them and I've used up almost all of it so I do really like this paint as like in general, I think it's pigmented, I think it's nice to use, I love the fact that it's non-toxic. I found that it does have a slight scent of walnut oil, but I, I don't mind that, I quite like it. So yeah, really nice non-toxic brand, like nice non-toxic paint. I don't know, I just don't tend to use it that often, I think it's to do with the texture. I just find it to be a little bit more difficult to spread and move around. But it's still a really good paint and I would highly recommend every artist if you're looking into oil paint brands you should still try it because it may be the paint of your dreams you know so that's M. Graham and then finally this is a very recent um, purchase of mine and sadly ended up being <laughs> has gone into the reject pile which is the Lucas 1862 now Lucas also have a student brand I believe called Lucas Studio so excited about these. Um, very popular in the US as far as I know. A uh, German brand and um, they also have, and I thought that they were so interesting and it, it they seem to have, be growing and ha sort of acquiring a lot more colours, selling a lot more colours. However, okay so what's great about them is they have really strong pigmentation and uh, really impressive actually and they feel nice to use, definitely falling quite in the middle between uh, you know Old Holland being the most thick and Michael Harding being more oily, I would say they fall in the middle, they're kind of like quite smooth to handle, quite buttery. Okay so my issue with these are that the colours to me are very slightly off and uh, like they've gone off no they haven't gone off but they are slightly off um so i bought the ultramarine blue and the magenta and these are two colors that i just know so well i mean i just know what to expect and out of all the paint brands that i've tried uh the ultramarine blue is always the same in terms of the color but extremely similar because it's ultramarine blue. However, this colour to me doesn't quite look like ultramarine blue. I know it sounds mad, but I personally think this colour is has been slightly changed perhaps because of the addition of beeswax and the dryers or for some other reason, but it was very slightly different to what I expected. Um, I don't exactly know what it was about it, but I just don't it just to me did not look exactly like an ultramarine blue and also the magenta I found that to be the same case it did not look to me like a magenta so it's only because I'm like extremely picky and pedantic about these things and I was really it just threw me off because I paint so much and I'm so used to these particular colours so I was just so confused by that I've 
I was so confused. I, I, they still mix beautifully, actually, which is really interesting. And they created a beautiful colour when mixed together, but it just wasn't quite the colour I was expecting. It was very pigmented, though. So if that doesn't, type of thing doesn't bother you, and it probably doesn't, because I feel like I'm just weird that way, then you should still check them out, because they still are really nice paints. It's just that slight issue with the actual colour itself that it just confused me so much. And for me, because I'm always colour mixing and like trying to do things really, really fast, if there's a colour that doesn't quite work, it work for me, I can just put it to the side because I have so many other amazing oil paints that work. So, alas, um, for me, they're not quite uh, my favourite, but I will test them again though in a couple of months and see if my viewpoint has changed. Possibly it will you know so uh there we are so i hope you have enjoyed this video i hope i didn't offend anyone by saying i didn't like certain paints it really is such a personal preference and i'm just telling you my personal experience uh, because you know nobody out there is like me which is probably a good thing <laughs> so i would like to thank you so much if you've made it this far you have won something i don't know maybe a bun um thank you so much for watching and i will see you soon take care guys